Hello, 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 hello. This is Ephraim Osarai. In case I've not met anyone that joins me today, um, I'm, I'm really excited about this session uh, because it's it's meant to provide some kind of information. Um, first of all, let me start by acknowledging uh, the the. Uh, First Nations uh, in, in Australia, uh, the Aboriginal and, and, and Torres Strait Islanders. Um, we, we honor them. Um, we, we, we acknowledge that this is their land um, that we are broadcasting from. They are the first people. Uh, we honor their past, the elders, the future leaders. Um, as an organization, and personally, I, I take this very serious. And they've made room for us to be part of their story. Um, OK, yeah, that's very important for us. Let me get that off the way. Uh, the other thing I wanted to quickly just chip in here, uh, for those joining right now, and anyone that will watch these later on, because um, there's going to be a recorded version. Uh, this session is not meant to uh, deliver any advice. There's no professional advice here. It's an overview. It's, it's, it, the, the information provided is of a general nature. Uh, if you need to look at specifics, um, my website contacts will be provided during the session. Please reach out later and then we can we can have a look and see how we can provide more support. Um, and then just let me use this slide to sort of introduce what we are going to be talking about and a bit about myself, even though it's not about me today. Um, this is a flyer we've used for the um, program to date. It's, it's about Australian visas and migration. Um, I, I don't want there to be any conflict about that particular information. The focus is Australian visas and migration. Now we are aware that Australian migration policy and system is similar to other jurisdictions, for example, Canada, um, um, a bit of UK as well, but the focus here is Australian visas and migration. And one of the trigger for the session today is that there's been quite uh, some changes to, to the migration system. Uh, it's no longer um, business as usual, mostly some things are the same, uh, but mostly the terrain has changed quite significantly. Um, so I felt this session may be helpful for a few people um, who may not be aware, who need to be informed. About myself, I'm, I'm a registered migration agent. That's a core of today's um, the work I'm doing here, my duty here today. Um, but I can tell you, I, I do other things as well. Um, I, I also work in the project management industry. I've, I've done a bit in the industry as well. I've done community work where I've supported people in this space. And, and one of the trigger to go uh, acquire the the license to be able to do this, or the registration to be able to do this, was that every time I support people in the community, I found that this was always the big elephant elephant in the room, if I may say that. Even for those that have been in the country for a while, when your immigration status is not settled, it, it seemed to also not make you to be well settled in the country. So. I think this needs to be resolved. Uh, it's not, I'm not the only one working here, but there are quite, quite a few people, but I'm very passionate about supporting and, and providing support to people that need it. So it, enough about myself. Like I said, it, it's not about me necessarily today. Um, 
can I just quickly say for those that are here with me right now, um, uh, I would rather, for example, I have uh, Om Omolo, Omolo La, sorry if I don't pronounce your name very well, Ola Diti. I appreciate you joining me. Um, I would rather respond to questions than just talking. So if you have questions you want to ask, just use the way you've said good morning now, for example, uh, I may, I may flag the example of Amolala here. Uh, uh, she, has, she has said good morning. So that same way you've written that, whether you are coming through uh, Facebook, YouTube, or LinkedIn, you can actually ask questions. Um, I would rather answer questions you may have than go through what I have. Well, I have a few things I, have, I can keep talking about and maybe that can trigger questions as we go. Please ask questions. General nature, um, I, can, I cannot provide uh, immigration advice here online. Uh, it's not, it's against the rule, um, but uh, I'm happy to take it offline later, get engaged with me, and we can see how we can support you in the journey. Um, not everything we can do where I cannot, I'll refer you on. Um, but I'm, like I said earlier on during my introduction, I'm very passionate about this area because immigration status um, has a lot to do with uh, some other settlement of people, uh, especially for immigrants. Um, so let's, let's, let's keep going. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, Lola, if I'm shutting, but well, let me say it fully so that I don't make mistakes. I'm all Lola, that's true, I am. Uh, but it, it's not the only thing I do. Um, it's not about, that's why you see me in my, in my main slogan for my company, my group of companies, which I'll introduce later. Uh, migration is more than migrating. Um, I, I, I look beyond just that process of migrating, but I do recognize uh, among a lot that that's, sometimes that is a very challenge before a lot of people. So we look at that squarely. So yes, um, I am a migration agent registered by uh, Australian Migration uh, Regulatory Body. Um, that's why everything I do here right now, can be monitored later. So I'm very careful what I can do, what I can do. We have boundaries. Um, but beyond even the regulatory bodies, personally, my ethical standards are quite strong. I treasure that a lot. So uh, just to quickly answer you there. Uh, so if you have a follow up question, ask, but it has to be a general uh, of general nature. I'm all alive. I cannot I cannot give advice here, uh, but I can offer some thoughts as much as is within the boundary. Thank you so much for engaging. And uh, that's what I said. I'd rather spend, I can stay here for another about an hour, um, just answering questions, providing thoughts. Uh, but I have a few things I can share while waiting for questions. Once again, thank you so much, Amalala. Let's hope there will be more questions coming in. Um, so I can keep going while we are waiting for more questions. Um, but one of the things that triggered is, like I said earlier on, there's a few change, few changes that have come through. It's not everything that has changed, but uh, they, are, they are significant enough to be well informed. Uh, whether you are intending to go for a visa or migration to Australia, or you're already here and you, your overall status is not fully sorted out, um, it's, it's, it's well important for you uh, to, to know what is happening, to get it, a kind of thought or um, insight of the way the Australian Migration Department is thinking. Uh, and that's how I walk, I think, along that same pattern. Because ultimately, as a migration agent, we cannot assure anybody of visas. But we have the training, we have the 
the yeah we have the training uh, to be able to uh, to sort of provide enough ground uh, to make you decision ready for your visas uh, or immigration application. Uh, so yes, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, uh, I also just have Johnny Noss, uh, Adeleke. Um, yes, thanks for for the appreciation. I I before I became a migration agent, I, I was already in this space. If you look at my profile, um, I I have gone through the process. I have lived experience, so that's why I am not just another agent. Um, I, I this is important for me. Uh, we we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, that's why I write as well. I, I have a couple of books. Some of them gone bestsellers because I write from that experience, uh, so that people don't have to go through all the pains that we went through while enjoying all the benefits of what we've learned. So this is my passion, and I felt. Just adding this additional layer of being able to legally, professionally, ethically support people in their pursuit of visas and immigration to Australia. Um, uh, and eventually, let me just add here, eventually I would will, I will, I will like to also be able to add New Zealand, but that is for later, not now. I don't currently have that layer added. Uh, but I just want to help people to look at their options, look at what is possible and what is not. There's no need wasting your time chasing tails that you can never catch. Um, the immigration department, not just only Australia, uh, most immigration department in the Western world, they have the way they think. And we'll share some of these uh, as we go while I still wait for uh, questions. I said already, for the sake of Adeleke just joining us as well online, I would rather answer questions that you may have. Uh, as long as it has to do with Australian migration and visas, where I cannot provide immediate answers, I will tell you, I'll get back to you, and I, you can take my word for it. I will definitely get back to you. Um, uh, I hope so far it's clear. Please let me know if I'm not coming across clearly. Um, I'm broadcasting from somewhere and I'm not very sure of the internet connectivity, but I think it's good enough. Um, yes, I think I really appreciate that the questions are beginning to come. I would like to know more. Uh, Yes, let me, and, and I'm, I'm going to be very open here. Please, if there are if there are questions you think that are personal, that you don't feel like sharing online, then, okay, you will have to look for another way, maybe email or get to my website and engage, because I have every question you ask, I would like to also share it so that others can, can, can benefit as well. Uh, so I just got a question from Adele K, which I think others may also um, benefit from it, but also draw. I'd like to know more insights and details on available skill jobs around software engineering and available pathways, requirement, experiences, fees involved, as well as where to find jobs. Uh, Adele K, this is one of those questions, like I mentioned before, it is very, there are some specifics, but I also appreciate that there's also some general nature which I can speak to. I can tell you right away that software engineering, IT, especially top-notch IT um, specialists and IT engineers or IT, uh, I, I can tell you now they try to go for the best. So if you know you have something to offer in this space, especially something that can differentiate you above the packs. Uh, I can tell you now that Australia is still very interested in this field uh, at the uh, So this is one I will say, take it offline, uh, go to my website. Um, I have an email there. Um, 
get in touch and let's explore together. Um, I can tell you right now that there's a fee, but most of the time I am quite um, reasonable uh, while being professional. Uh, and sometimes depending on how complex the initial consultation is, that may be complimentary, uh, but not in all cases uh, are they like But quickly, you've asked a question that shows me that you are researching Adeleke, and I want to, I want to validate you for that because the kind of question you've asked here is exactly what will make you decision ready. Uh, please keep researching even before you approach any migration agent, even if it's not me. Before you approach someone, do your own research. I, I tell people, do your because even as migration agents, we're humans. We could even miss it sometimes, although sometimes we pay for it if we miss it, because Omara, our regulatory body, is very harsh on migration agents that do not do their homework. So, but do your own homework as well. You're asking the right question the direction of skilled migration in Australia right now, and I can tell you this, Adeleke, thank you for asking this question because others may get some insight. The direction is what you're actually asking now. Rather than just wanting to come overseas, let the opportunities drive you. Differentiate yourself with the opportunity. Position yourself to where the opportunities are. And that is where I can tell you right now, and that is how I'm positioned as a migration agent. Uh, the days are gone where the department would just give visas, just give it for giving sake. No, and they never did that anyway. But I can tell you right now, they want to make sure uh, people do not just migrate and come to start looking for work as much as possible. Uh, they can't guarantee that everyone will get a job when they migrate. But by the time you are coming, they want to try as much as possible. When they give you that visa, they feel that you can almost hit the ground running with a job. That is a level of, of uh, if you like, streamlining that these changes have brought through. So Adeleke, I hope you got something there. Once again, I just want to uh, validate your question. Please keep researching. You're in the right direction there. Um, so I, I'll just, while we're still waiting for more questions, and again, you can follow up with your question, Adeleke, but let me, let me just validate what Adeleke just asked uh, to, to tell everyone. That's the direction uh, of the, migration strategy that that the Australian government has just released uh, late, during the end part of last year, and it's still being implemented. Uh, so if you look at the side of the screen where you have the migration strategy, that is the key slogan of the strategy. Getting migration working for the nation, for workers, for businesses, for all Australians. So I, I, I don't think it's a bad news, but I can bear a, a challenging news. It will be a challenge for some people. The direction is not so much about you as a prospective um, migration agent um, or migrant. That's why I also tell people, look after yourself as well. Uh, if if Australia will not give you what you want, I still believe it's one of the best. I'm here for 21 years now, going to 22 with any, without any intention to change. Uh, it's still one of the best places to live and work and raise family. So, but primarily, it's about the direction the country is going, businesses are going, and that's why I refer back to Adelike's question. Don't put the horse or the cat ahead of the horse. You'll keep struggling. And this is a big feedback I want to give people. First, as a lived, experienced person, migrant myself, for over two decades now. And then because I really want people to succeed when I support them as well, let's chase 
the opportunity, put the horse ahead of the cat. And then your visa becomes, uh, and I can tell you there's so much to challenge decisions that is not well made. So anyone that do not grant you such a visa, again, we cannot guarantee that is the department's uh, remit, but we have, uh, we have tools and systems, and Australia is fair in that regards, to challenge decisions. So if you've done your homework and someone somewhere in the department still feels you've not done enough, we can challenge it. You can challenge it. But do your homework, match your skills to the opportunity, match your skills to the direction that this strategy is going, because they are really serious about this. They started implementing it. And I put it to the right, not that I'm trying to sell, oversell my business. I always knew uh, about this. So to an extent, I can boldly say that my business is aligned with the government in this direction. Because for me, migration is more than just migrating. I know for some people, they may be in desperate situation. Some people may, that's why I'm not so much skillful in the area of humanitarian visas. Uh, people do that better because some people are really, they really need to leave their countries. And Australia also recognize that. They have visas for that. But when it comes to skill migration, comes to students through graduate visas, yes, you have to be prepared. Otherwise, your visas will not be granted. That's just simple. Uh, and as an agent or as a, as, a, as a professional in this field, the last thing I want to do is to deceive anybody when they are not prepared. So yes, there's an alignment there. Migration is more than migrating. An Australian government is saying, hey, my, they, they are trying to streamline migration to make it work for the country. Yes, as a worker, you should benefit from it. That's why you also have to lead your own uh, direction in this, because you have to achieve your goal. You have to achieve your dreams. It's not enough just to pursue visas, uh, even though, like I said, for some people, that may be what it is. So that strategy, they have some key points they started implementing. And they started this, and there's no time to go through these in details, but I'll just run through them while expecting more questions. So far, Adelike's questions has been brilliant, and I hope we'll have more questions. Ask me any question, like I said. But one of the, the very first strategy here, and I, say I don't want to spend time on this. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a lecture. Uh, according to that strategy, Temporary skill migration will only address skills that are needed. And that is already being implemented. I can tell you that right now. So any day without selling one skill more than another, but that's just the way it is. Uh, health professionals are always, always highly in demand. But it doesn't mean that like Adeleke came across earlier on, uh, health professionals cannot do their work without uh, skilled uh, IT professionals. They can't. Everything is going, uh, as, you, as we all know, everything is going uh, uh, IT now, AI. Everything, everything is going really technological. So, um, why we know some area because over time they've proven not to go off the skills list of demand. They've never gone off. I can't remember ever seeing a medical doctor going off that that uh, that list. A nurse or aged care worker, which is becoming very highly in demand. Um, and I also know that engineering, especially some engineering has always been there. Uh, engineering like mechanical, always be there because all these things were run by machinery. So this, this particular slide, which is a key action one of that strategy is that they are streamlining all those 
these stars that you, you, you used to see, uh, every one of them now will be going through serious scrutiny to make sure they map up to skills need. And the immigration policy already been rewritten. Some of them already been released to reflect this direction. So if, uh, if, if, even if they're not working with me, please work with an agent that can prepare you, uh, that can prepare you so that your, your application is decision ready. Very important that time decision ready. It's one thing to want to go for a visa. It's another thing to be decision ready. And the kind of question that Dileke asked just now, I get excited when I, I can work with such a person because they have done their own research as well. They they really want it, you know, not, not being entitled, you know. They want it. They are going for it. And such, such a client makes a makes an agent's life so easy to work with, you know. Um, there's another question here. So that's the number one, but let me see. Uh, like I said, I am I'm more after taking questions today than really, really just talking. Uh, faith is as a question. I want to know what opportunity I get in healthcare setup. Uh, I have a level three diploma in health and social care from UK issuing body, but I'm in Nigeria presently. Again, Faith, without knowing the details, Healthcare practitioners are always in demand, uh, but I can't, I cannot provide you specifics uh, because the last thing I want to do, number one, get my license taken away from me for giving you wrong advice. Because when you offer advice under this condition, you like you, you may make a mistake. So, um, but I can tell you right now of a general nature that healthcare sector, especially when you say you have a qualification from the UK, uh, the registration body here, I know that when you bring the registration from places like UK, the US, Canada, you know, those kind of countries, unfortunately, unlike some other countries, uh, you know, they look favorably towards those kind of uh, uh, qualification. So yes, faith, uh, without being specific, uh, opportunities are there, but what opportunities is, is going to some kind of details. I can tell you now, nurses are still high in demand in Australia, healthcare workers, even I can tell you now, age, those that can take care of the, the, the people that are aging because Australia is an aging population. Uh, we will always need people to take care of those that are getting older. I can tell you that right now, that is not going to reverse. Uh, the same thing with, of course, that, that also goes with nurses, doctors, allied health workers. So, the only challenge, and we don't have a, an immediate solution for this, I get concerned. Sometimes I put my heart of advocacy on and try to make a case. Why is it that, you know, some countries keep getting that, that um, sometimes what seems like penalty, you know, that's exclusion. Uh, if you have, you could be the best prospect, best candidate, best applicant, but just because your qualification is from some certain countries, then you don't have a chance. You know, it, sometimes it looks, it, it looks, um, it looks unfair, uh, but every country have their own policies. They have their own way they work. Um, but that is what it is. But thankfully, advocacy is still going on. I, I do that regularly as well, uh, trying to make a case, hey, why don't you consider this other option? How long would this be? What is What can change this? What day would these other countries be on that special list, you know? Uh, but Faye, I don't know whether that's helpful, but um, yes, 
where you are right now sometimes it's not the, it's not as important as where you got the qualification from um the father you're in nigeria but part of the process definitely uh where you are applying from may come in uh what kind of passport you hold definitely uh but one of the key ones is where is the qualification from who issued you that qualification what is the integrity behind that qualification that is what they are really concerned about and unfortunately uh, it's shameful to say uh, even as practitioners or professionals in the field we've seen very painful dodgy qualifications uh, from some of these areas and over time they have data and records that make them to to start start making such decisions that unfortunately affect more than those that are the perpetrators you know that's just how it is i hope that helps faith uh, about great question thank you for that while i still wait for more questions let me go back to those slides, like I said, this first one, definitely in the skill remit. Uh, this is one area that we were discussing already. Uh, there's another one there, reshaping permanent skill, key action to, to drive long-term prosperity. What is What they're just saying here is really, they want to make sure that the skill migration uh, system you know, works for both the country and the migrant. Unfortunately, some migrants come over and they, they even they begin to get frustrated because uh, what they had in mind, their aspirations, their visions, their dreams don't get realized. Um, I used to say painfully, like I said, I do a bit of advocacy. Um, I wrote an article one time, how long will uh, qualification in some region, keep going down the toilet, or oh, sorry to use, bring toilet in here, but how long can we keep wasting our skills, hard end skills? I remember when I got my MBA um, back in 19, uh, 1995, oh, it was, it was big for me. It was significant achievement. Uh, but since migrating, I must say that that has not really done much for me uh, other than being part of my overall presentation as a, as a highly skilled person, uh, but directly as in terms of job requirements, being looked upon to, to help me get a job or get promotion here, I can tell you that no. Uh, and, and that is just a reality. So this whole thing is being streamlined now just to make sure that by the time you are given that visa, uh, you also have that benefit as a long-term prosperity for you, uh, also for the country. So they're really looking at some highly skilled people um, that will get visas very relatively quickly. Uh, <laughs> And there's a slide that will come to that. So it's been streamlined so that some visas now could take much less than it was before because you bring in a skill that they know and they've done their due diligence, the department, they feel that with that skill set, you are almost going to hit the ground running and really being prosperous for yourself and for the country, for the country almost immediately. So that's the essence of that. Uh, number two action. Um, so I'll just keep going while I wait for uh, more questions. The integrity and quality of international education. I'm leaving this for another session. That's why today's part is really focused on skill. Uh, but uh, the education system, student visa, it's another one that has really received significant reshaping um, and again there's no time to go into details and uh, not for today but um, 
strengthening the integrity. I can tell you one of the things you have done now is that your English language requirements is going to be higher. I think it's already higher. Um, and some other conditions, some other uh, requirements for the visa that needs to be satisfied. Uh, it's, it's a little bit more strengthened uh, for, 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 uh, for using better words or for finding better words than that. But I can tell you that right now, this is another area for some of you here who, who may listen to this later, later you can only see this later. You may, you may start seeing the effect. Sometimes as, as agents, because we belong to a, a body, the Migration Institute of Australia, which is also a strong advocacy body, I'm really glad that I'm part of that, that group. They, they give the, the updates, the level of impact of some of these changes. Visas are being refused. Um, sometimes applicants don't even know why. Agents sometimes don't even know why, <laughs> you know? It's as, it's as serious as that. But we are getting better at knowing why and actually avoiding that situation as much as possible. It's better to tell you, this is not going to work. Let's strengthen your case better than rushing to put in your application and you get a refusal with serious consequence. When you get a refusal of visa, that itself has its own consequences. So um, this, this is going to be an ongoing challenge because at the same time, higher education is one of the most, is one of the significant national earners for Australia. <laughs> so, so I can tell you now that don't, if you, if you believe any myth that they will stop giving student visa, forget that. Student visa will be given. The question is, who will get them? Who will get them? And that's a big question, even as, as professionals in the industry, we are also trying to grapple with. Um, still waiting for more questions. As I said, I'd rather answer your questions than do this. That's why we are doing this today. But while waiting, let's keep going. Just quick highlights of the key actions. Of those mig of the migration strategy, many of these are already being implemented. Some of them are still being uh, processed. Uh, this one, I think it's 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 a no brainer. The, the the department is aware that some people are being exploited, uh, especially when you come in as a migrant. And for me, just like the department, I personally have zero tolerance for this kind of exploitation because you already, people are already vulnerable. And unfortunately you have businesses, employers that uh, exploit the already vulnerable. And the department is, is really going out to at least reduce these as much as they can. And, and, and being involved in advocacy, I'm also, I also do this a lot with my uh, NGO. Uh, where people need to understand the laws of, of uh, employment laws, uh, what are your rights, it's not enough. That's why migration is more than migrating, uh, which is the main slogan of my company. You need to be informed. So this is a no-brainer and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to the department for taking this up seriously. Uh, but at the same time, they will also be hard. The second point there, misuse of the visa system. They are going to be hard on dodgy documents. They are going to be hard on, on, on people that try to take the, take the uh, short, short court. Uh, they're going to be really hard on that. And they are serious. And even as a professional, the last thing any migration agent wants is to be involved with such cases. Um, Yes, I'm not going to talk about this because it's a long-term thing. They are planning the right skills for the right places. It's, it still boils down to what we've been talking about since. Um, migration and visas to Australia is no longer business as usual, for most at least. 
even for family visas, even though we're not we're not focused on family today, it's 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 no longer just the way it used to be. Uh, and and this is why I advise people. I know that you can actually apply for visa by yourselves um, um, because the, the website is there, all the forms are there. But sometimes there may be a case uh, to use agents uh, to get more chances. Of, uh, of of successful visa application because you don't want to be refused. Uh, sometimes when you are refused, there are also conditions that go with that, you know. Um, so uh, let's, it's not the end of the world when you are refused. Like I said, it can be challenged, uh, but prevention is better than cure. So this, the planning is going on right now. Uh, this part, I, I I really I, I did I did a I did a, a short video on this which I'm going to post later, just to sensitize people of the opportunities in going to regional areas. Uh, people want to crowd the city, and uh, there may be valid reasons for that, but part of part of the migration strategy is that. The department want to strengthen uh, support for regional Australia. Um, and region here, like some people have a mindset about village. Uh, look out for that video. I'll post it soon where I did I did a clip from one of one of those areas they call regional areas to tell you uh, sometimes there may even be an advantage in pursuing opportunities in those areas. And there are peculiar concessions when you apply and you are ready to be flexible enough to go to the regional areas you know um the seventh one this is very specific like any country australia also uses the migration system to express the their relationship with other countries and they specifically developing uh, uh, ties uh, via migration with the Indo-Pacific region, uh, like all the people around Australia here. They already done that with Malaysia as well, even though uh, there's a lot going on right now in terms of opportunities for people from, from Malaysia. Uh, Indonesia has always been around Australia region, uh, but this is meant for that. And finally, and I mentioned that earlier on, some visas, uh, visa applications are likely going to be quicker, quicker. Uh, for example, if they know that by coming to the country, you, you're going to be highly valuable to the country. <laughs> Your visa may take shorter than you can ever think. And because they simplify some of those visas for areas of high demand, uh, areas where they know that uh, this person is just going to uh, come in and, and start. Uh, and they're also removing some bottlenecks uh, in some specific areas as well. So this is just going to make it easier for people to come in. Um, Without overselling, I said earlier, I'm just going to introduce a bit of when I when I showed you this slide that says I think we as an organization we are very aligned with the direction the department is going, and that is why our slogan is migration is more than migrating. Uh, I, I lead a group, not just sustainable migration services, and that group. Uh, is also heavily involved in the marketplace. Tri WPTY has been involved in consulting, particularly in the mining, project management, and uh, resource energy se sectors in Australia. Um, so we want to extend that right now, rather than just being there for my own sake. Uh, of course, there are benefits for me and my and my staff as well, but we want to stretch it out uh, because one thing I know 
there are still opportunities. Australia is still a very young country with vast opportunities. They need people to help exploit those opportunities. But this migration strategy is meant to put the right people in the right places. And that is why I use that illustration as well, putting the horse ahead of the car. So TriW is going to do that for us. Go out to the marketplaces, have intelligence of what is happening in the industry and companies and businesses, where the opportunities are. Some of them we may even create ourselves. Yes, um, I've always been very uh, visionary about that, that uh, migrants are pools of highly skilled people. Unfortunately, those skills go wasted. They just go to waste, uh, which is not to anyone's benefit, including Australia as a country and businesses. So um, I'm really, for us, it's, it's really making it a, a concerted effort and then counseling, and I, I, I don't, I do not take this for granted. That's why I'm also a registered counselor. Uh, unfortunately, some people end up getting uh, worse off because of migration. I know that is a big statement, but I, I've dealt in this in this area. I know what it could take out of people. So there's a need to maintain that, that people side of things, that, that side that could look beyond the superficial and, and also support you in those areas and your family. Um, so like I said, I don't want to oversell this. That's a website there, trywu.com.au uh, in case you want to, want to know more about uh, you, you don't even have to work with me. And I'm not, of course, I, I, I know that I do what I do very well. And I've had successes uh, in the last visa, this for someone in the, in the graduate visa sector was quite smooth. Uh, uh, just like I referred to Adeleke earlier, that, that client made my job easier. She wanted it. She prepared for it. She worked with me, and we got an answer quickly. Uh, we got a decision-ready application to go into the department, uh, and before you know it, she got her medicals uh, letter to go to medicals, and then she did it, and then she has she has a visa. Uh, she so. It's, it's something I'm, I'm really passionate about, something that unfortunately the streamlining of the migration strategy makes it more difficult for some jurisdiction. I, I don't want to run away from that, uh, but there are still opportunities if you work with the right person and with the right mindset. Um, it looks like the questions have, have, have dried up um i'm really i'm really keen but let me start running it up here it's not just about staying online for staying sake i'm here to provide support i would rather answer your questions than go through some of those slides i just went through and so in case i'll just hang in for the next two to three minutes in case there are questions Otherwise, let me again, once again, uh, just give give credit to to where it's it's due for those that have that have uh, already um, just said something or asked questions. Um, thank you, Amolola. Um, for the question you asked earlier, just said good morning and then you asked a question and I hope you got the answers you, you needed. And uh, faith, uh, health, health workers, health practitioners, any day, 
at least as much as I know to date. And I don't think it's going to go anywhere uh, because Australia is an aging population and the health system is one of the, and I can tell you it is one of the best. Uh, I know the other that are also quite good, but they are so serious with the health system. I have had benefit of that myself, my family. So it's one area they take very seriously and they are not going to let off on that uh, faith. So if you want, if, if you really need to explore that further, um, I don't know what level three diploma will mean. Those are the things we can just check. Uh, every application, visa application for me is a project. Of course, I'm a project manager. So I, I approach it that way. It's a project. Uh, it may mean that, of course, it doesn't mean necessarily extraordinarily higher costs, but I, I like doing things uh, quality control, get it right first time, always as much as you can. So uh, thank you, Faith. And then uh, finally, I delegate, I still want to give credit to that question you asked. Um, it's, it's worth chasing, it's worth chasing. Uh, at the air was where one can get more information, carry out more research on skill migration. A uh, brilliant question, Adeleke. Uh, you, you can get past the department website. Really, really, everything is, almost everything is there. Everything. And I did show, the website is on, is on one of the, the slides I showed. You can, you can take, if you like, you can, you can take a snapshot. Um, like I said, it's, for me, it's not necessarily uh having to direct all the traffic to myself um let me just make sure i get it right otherwise i'll i'll just i'll put it down for you right away but i think i yes i have it somewhere almost all the slides home affairs even if you forget the emi because emi stand for immigration home affairs dot gov dot au if almost everything you need for your research at the lake is there. Even options of visa you may be qualified for. Um, I still suggest using an agent, even though it's not me, uh, because having the training that, that we went through for this and the experience and cases we meet just provide that extra uh, layer of cover. Uh, even though it's still not guaranteed, though, uh, because ultimately the decision for every visa rests with the department. Yeah, I hope that was that was useful. Uh, um, yeah. If there are no other questions. So thank you, Adeleke, and hopefully, even if you don't use my service, keep in touch. Um, um, uh, yeah, apart from my website, all the regular social medias, uh, uh, so socials on there, um, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Instagram. I tend to engage more on LinkedIn because I try to keep things professional and though I still do a bit on Facebook as well. Um, all right. Once again, thank you for staying with me. I intend to have a part two of these. I'm not sure of the exact time where I will focus on student visa uh, because that is one area that on one side, there's vast opportunities because it's one pathways that Australian government actually feeds resources to work in the, in the country. But at the same time, and this is one key area that even as a prospective client, you need to be aware of, anything that will indicate 
that you are coming here and not intending to go back, tell your application visa uh, positive feedback, bye bye. And I can tell you that right now, uh, they are very firm on that. And as an agent, we we do we do know how to prepare you for that. Uh, again, without giving you all the guarantees, but we do it enough because we also know how the case officers think. We are using the same laws. They are not using extra laws. They are using the law that I also use. <laughs> so uh, I'll do that soon about the student visa. But today has been skilled, uh, just skilled visas. And there are some things hanging here. I may not have given you all your answers, but please, if you need to engage further, um, I'm available. Um, quite busy though, so uh, but I can make time to engage. Thank you so much, everyone that stayed with me, and for those that will see this later, uh, because it's going to be on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Um, um, I still want to thank you, and even after today uh, leave comments uh, the comments will still be coming to me from those platforms um, and then all the best for those aspiring uh, can I just round up with this uh, haven't said everything uh, please don't take it as all negative the opportunities to come to Australia either by as a student skilled uh, temporary worker, family coming to join other families here, the opportunities are there. They are there. Uh, it may look like some jurisdiction or some countries are almost not getting, uh, getting favored, if I may use it that way, or getting, uh, getting themselves on, that, on those special lists, because there are some special lists I can tell you right now. <laughs> of countries, uh, which as an advocate, sometimes I struggle with, but hey, that's is, is a law. Uh, but I can tell you the opportunities are there. Would uh, you just need to prepare your application and position yourself better? Uh, definitely the opportunities are there. So don't take this as negative, rather as positive to help you prepare better. And I'm always available to assist professionally. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I'll, 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 I'll put feelers out there when the next one is coming. I uh, hope to connect ongoing connection with you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for staying with me. Bye-bye.